I want to thank God for one thing. As a church, just like the nation is passing through many challenges, you've been hearing people complaining of many things here and there. The most present one are two issues. Um, one to do with insecurity. If you take a large part of Kenya, which is about two thirds, just cut Kenya and put it up there. There's a lot of thuggery. On one side is Al Shabab, the other side is uh, uh, the, the Pokot versus Turkana, the Samburu. It's a lot of chaos. If you are traveling those places, they are so vast, particularly the place where the Pokot place. Uh, my brother, Nomadi Sami, goes walks to there. Sometimes I cross through, and you see some of the rugged mountains. You wonder even how an Askari will get to those people. I tell you, it doesn't matter how you are trained. It is a rough terrain. The guys watch you from the top there when you're coming from down and wonder what are you going to do. Even if you have a plane, they have places to hide. So it's not an easy place to, to go, whether you're using army or police or others. So we just trust God that you may have peace there. Now, the other thing we have all forgotten, the weather issues. This sunshine is so hot. Um, people are lacking food in the same areas I've just mentioned. You are blessed to eat and take a meal. Three weeks ago, I went to Kakuma. And uh, when we were back in, in Lodwa, we visited the Trukana University College. We were looking at some building which had not been completed in construction. Only to realize there are some animals which have sneaked through the fence and they are gasping for air, for food. The owners are nowhere to be seen. They are hungry. Of course, we did something to those worlds we, we saw. But that's how the country is. Now, as a Christian, you look at how rough things are happening. We are prayed, and we are still trusting God for the rain. There are signs, but they are not, it's not yet here. Uh, another challenge that I want to go to is that most of us are in what we may call the marketplace. Uh, Presbyter calls it the marketplace. You know, when you are here, and the Sami uh, and he's able to play his music, we worship and all that. You feel the presence of God. He is there. But while out there, there are challenges. For example, the economy being poor, the shilling has just tumbled about 25%. So you do business. When you go home, you don't see what you did. At work, we are harassed by what we call our bosses in different sectors. For example, you see them corrupt. We are playing, we say we co fight corruption, but that's when it goes on higher and higher and higher. You even question yourself, is God there? Yes, I know I've seen you in the past, but where are you? I'm not feeling you. I'm not seeing you. So I was so touched today there when you hear from God speaking directly to you, reminding you that you are not where you are by accident. I chose you. I chose you. If you open Isaiah 41, verse 8. But you, O Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth. God chose you from wherever you are. I don't care where your ends of the earth were. It could have been from Russia, Ukraine, Japan, Timbuktu, or from simply Uziru here. That's the end of the earth. Or from your, wherever you are, deep in the sin. So he chose you from the end of the earth. From its farthest corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I'll strengthen you and help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. What a blessing, word of God. And verse 11 says, And all who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. All, all those situations, they surely be disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes off the whole of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid, you warm Jacob. Jacob is thinking like a warm, mm, you know a warm. Little Israel, huh, isn't that what we think? Do not fear, for I myself will help you, declare the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Amen. So I want to emphasize on that, that God is with us. We should not fear. We should not fear at all, especially when we are in the marketplace. I say the presbyter, when you are in this sanctuary, we feel so safe. We are home. But in the marketplace, it is open. There we are. So, my little topic today is about Christian living in the marketplace. I didn't intend to share that, but I thought I'd emphasize that God is with us. Yes. Um, our lead verse is Ephesians chapter 4, and we shall lead from 417 to the end thereby. So I tell you this and insist it on the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you have learned. Okay, so it's coming. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him, in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you are taught with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires. To be made new in the attitude of your minds and put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully. to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his, their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, browning, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as, in Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. The reading can go on further to uh, chapter 5 to verse uh, 20, but I want to leave that for another day. Uh, we are going to remind ourselves, I'm not going to preach just something new, but I want to say, remind us 
How do we operate in the marketplace as Christians? We were sharing with my wife just this morning on how tough it is to keep some jobs. And she was reminding me the days we were courting and we married. Uh, by then, she was under a CEO who is not born again, chief executive officer. And uh, because they do not know Christ, they tend to do things uh, that would wish you to go into their sin. Um, for example, we know one vice uh, that is very common in the country, the issue of corruption. People like corrupting to get their way out. You hear about tenders, it's all given in corruption. You all hear about going in offices when you want the doors to be open. It's all corruption. Uh, you want uh, some rights, even like a driving license, birth certificate, an ID. If you are not careful, somebody in a Huduma may want something to quicken your, to quicken your process, a passport. Corruption, corruption. And all kinds of things. Harassment left and right. But how do we live as Christians? in this challenging life. When you are doing business, you need a license. It's not easy to come. Um, I remember my daughter, she has a company and she imports one or two things. But one time she shared with me the, the 17 strong points which you must pass before you import anything in the nation. And most of these, they just want you to bribe. But she did for a long time. It's at the end of the second year that she succeeded to get the right documents. But even that, she still ha is harassed before she sees her things come in the country. Uh, she, she imports cinnamon and uh, vanilla. Um, these are very rare commodities in the country. And people love them for condiments for cakes, for other things. Of course, she prepares cakes with them. But the best vanilla is found in countries like Madagascar. Uh, Uganda tries to, but they are, they doesn't have very good flavor. So she has to import. And all along, corruption. But uh, she decided she's not corrupting anybody. So, and all that. So how do we live? Obvious, the Bible is reminding you there that those of the world, if you read Ephesians from 4 verse 17 and onwards, it tells us that we should not live in the futile of our thinking. The people in the world, they have been warped in their mind, especially in the way of thinking. It's futile, meaning hopeless. They think for you to conquer the world, you don't need God. It's how smart you are in the world. How trained, how educated, how much you know who and who. It's not wrong to know and who and who. We still need connections. But if there are connections of corruption, they are not good. So the world, if you read Ephesians, tells us it's darkened in their thinking. And this is because of the hardness of their hearts. The hearts do not trust that if you receive Christ and you trust God for all things you'll get through. So because of this, they indulge in all forms of utility or, or all forms of impurity. I've just mentioned corruption. Corruption is one of them. They are full of greed. It's a man. Um, somebody was training me on uh, retirement somewhere a few days ago and we were reminding ourselves these houses we are building with very high stairs up there you may reach another age of 80 even just going one step higher you pray three times because all, ma all muscles are aching they are telling you no you can't go up there so putting even the second one it is warfare. So we are told, please, when you have a house that is a my sonnet or what, 
make the law of law the most beautiful. And let that's where your bedroom should be. Because that's the truth. God allowing you many years in your 80s, that's where you'll enjoy living. You'll be looking up there and wonder. We used to live somewhere in the room up there in our corner. I wonder how it looks nowadays. But it's still the same house. The reason is because sometimes I lead to greediness and us. We go and grab things we don't need. You only need a small house. A small car to transport you from here to there. We need cars nowadays. But you don't need a whole bus. You know this very this car called the V8? The engine of a V8 is so powerful. It can pull a lorry. The engine has been put in a tiny vehicle that does not need it. Yet that's where we have put it, a whole lorry. And most of the time to transport one man. Greed. It's in the world. The same way you find people who have a lot of money. You don't get satisfied. Some people have billions, 20 but they're the ones who are looking for the most money. And I can assure you, if I gave you one billion and just told you to live your minimum life on it, <laughs> you'll die before you complete the one billion. So we are full of greed in the whole world. But we are being reminded we should not be like the world. We should not be like anybody outside there. In the marketplace, Remember, our theme this year, I'm not out of it, is divine enlargement through outreach. One way in which we can bring more children to God is the way we live. Are we operating like the marketplace? It's good to operate there in the marketplace as a Christian. But if we join the rest of the world, we are living in futility. They wonder, what's about this? I don't want to lie to you. When I went to the funeral, I went to bury somebody I call a mentor. That was Professor Magoa. I used to wonder why does this guy, we, we, he liked me. Don't want to lie. He, li he just liked me. He knew I was born again, and yet he's a Catholic. So I would ask myself, why does he like me and we are not in the same faith? But I realized one thing, that in many meetings it would be, I would be quiet. But now when things are tough, I say, no. hello, praise God. Tuombe. One time I was blessed to go to him to China and we spent a week there. So he saw a lot of Tuomba in me. And I think that's why he respected me. People will respect you and I desire to have what you have as a Christian. If that is seen in your life out there. Could we purpose to see it out there? The word of God says, if you read 2 Corinthians verse 5, 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become anew. Now, we are reminded in Romans that we are put off the old self. In all aspects of our lives, and that includes our mindset. Where is our mindset? It also includes our desires. What do we desire most? The reason I'm saying this, whether you want it or not, and you're in the marketplace, everybody's seeing. They know what's your mindset. If it's really trusting in God, they know it. They know your desires. Your workers will see. The people you live around with. And maybe that will be used to attract them to Christ. Yes. You should be new in your attitude. 
your attitudes, what's your character? Is it different? You are put off the old self. You are no longer the old self. They should see that your desire is to live in holiness. My brothers and sisters, we have no shortcut. It doesn't matter how rough outside there, but every morning we need to pray to God and say, can you allow me to live a holy life, a clean life, despite the challenges? It's all dirty. But when I come back in the evening, I want to say hallelujah to God. See you, Raisi. Ni Raisi? No. So I'm going to mention some of the things that we need to do in our new life that often occur in marketplaces. Just to remind us, it's a reminder. We need to put off falsehood. How do we talk? Do they see lies in you? Like this, you say, I'm born again. And then the next morning you're doing other things. Yesterday, just before I came here, I gave a venue to 1,200 women. I don't know who told them to wear, to wear white. They were called Western uh, province. Western use something caucus. I had stopped giving them that venue, but I was phoned by the prime cabinet secretary and he said he would be the guest of honor. So he came. They were talking about how to empower a woman. 1,200 women. So we sat there and uh, I thought they had a good agenda and the way to go it, but it almost broke down. It almost went to chaos. Some fellows invaded the meeting with a, with a helicopter. You know them. And they grabbed the meeting. But the prime cabinet told me, just relax. They talked when they were through. But in the talk course of talking, there was snatching of microphones here and there. Um, when they are given a chance, like the one, one of the first topics that I had, and I want to hear it from my sisters, this very big rumor that we are having a ladies' meeting this, af this afternoon. Do you hurt the kitchen that much? Yeah, because that's the topic that came up. But me in my house, I've tried to go to the kitchen, and I was just there by her. I was, I was told that is their kingdom. But yesterday I found women who were saying no, until they were corrected by some of the women who came there and said, the real things you should be telling women is women empowerment. In a few of the following, maybe that can help you. One is what we call like economic empowerment. Can we look in ways in which women can grow businesses, make uh, companies, do all sorts of things? So they, they are empowered. Is that a bad thing? That's one. Two, education. And they looked at the issue of pregnancies before you go. In Western right now, as you speak, there are some places where pregnancies are so high. For you to get even 50% of the girls who started class one, entering class form one, you'll be blessed. Because they got pregnant somewhere. Can we stop that, that issue of early pregnancies? There was a girl who stood there yesterday she started to get children at the age of 15. She is now 25, but with three children, big ones, and an early marriage, and no education. And in those things we should fight, the, the issue of HIV and AIDS, the, the issue of cancer, all those, they are good topics to fight. But that went on. What I'm saying here is the issue of falsehood. Falsehood. Do we speak rightly to one another? Can people see the truth from your mouth? What I mean is, when you say this, do you do it? Do you practice it? People will see Christ in you if you practice what you say. The other thing I want to talk about is the issue of managing our emotions. In verse 26, it's telling us about our anger. In our anger, we should not sin. 
Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry to give the devil a foothold. I've, I've noticed this happening in, in real life. There are people, especially probably in the world, or even when you are born again, it's not easy to manage emotions, especially the issue to do with anger. A brother may have made a mistake to you, or one of the workers, or one of your clientele. How do you speak to them? We know about the greatest commandment. What does it say? You must love the Lord God with all your heart, with, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is like, you must love as you love yourself. Now, if you really love your neighbor, who is your neighbor? <laughs> we know it's from the story of the, the Samaritan, huh? The, the Samaritans were not Jews. Jews and Samaritans hated each other badly because the Jews used to say, Toto Kafiri. You know how the Samaritans came in? They were not originally Israelis. They did not know God. So the Jews would look at them as those others. So they hated each other. But this Samaritan who was walking and found this person wounded, and the one who cleaned his wounds and did what you may call first aid, paramedics, they give you first aid until you reach good medication. So he took him to an inn, a place where this person got medic. But that was a Samaritan. It's similarly, you remember the ten who, had le who were leprous, and Jesus healed them. Who came back to say, well, thank you? It was a Samaritan. So those people we call the worldly, <laughs> you may find out that the ones with a good heart. They are the ones who may forgive quickly. They are not bitter. Can you walk in love with your neighbor? Just like that, those Samaritans did. So you may find that the way we react, somebody just did like a small thing, a small problem, and you become so bitter. You become so angry. You want revenge. Could you practice forgiveness? Number three, verse 27, is telling us, do not steal. In your workplace, are there things you are getting which you do not deserve? And I want to look at a few people. For example, maybe you are a cook or you are a maid. Do you chobi chobi a chumbi or yenye or sugar? Chobi chobi is the same as stealing in little bits. Oh, I lost you there. There are people who take people's things daily, but in very little amounts. You may never notice. Huh? Like Kuchobe Chobe Asali, as children do. I used to do that when I was young. But <laughs> I didn't know Christ. Do you steal small, small things? Teachers and pens are exposed to you. Do you steal them and take home when they have not been given? When you have been entrusted with money, I remember when I was in Standard 7, almost doing Standard 8, there's somebody who trusted me in his shop. So I was taking care of it. People would come and sell. But there were two. There was Kenangai and uh, another one called Elisha. Now, this one called Elisha would come in the evening, and you know there was a drawer where we'd put money. So you'd check when you're looking behind and I tore a shilling turn on a I would notice this guy stealing it many times. I didn't like it, but I was wondering how do you report him to his friend? When the shop was still growing, but this one called Elijah, instead of being a prophet, Elijah. Where's Prophet Elijah here? 
He was a thief. The word of God says that a man should not eat if he has not done what? I'm paraphrasing. You have not worked. God expects us to work. That spirit of laziness, of not going to work, stop it. Today, I'm going to meet the men. Men say, man. Huh? Let us repeat it again. Men say, man. Yeah, we are going to meet after the service here. God commands us to work. I do not entertain men who remain home, especially when your excuse is that you don't have a job and your wife has a job. Men quietly when the ladies are listening. If your wife is going to work at 5.30 a.m. in the morning and you don't have work, just wake up and go to work at 5.15, a little earlier. I don't care where you are going, but look for work. <laughs> are you hearing, man? Simu say, man, yes? Yes. Peter, they didn't say yes. Man, I asked you to say, man, can you say yes to what I just said? That you wake up at 5.15, and she's going to work at Come back home with a little piece of bread or even nyama a quarter kilo in your pocket. Yes. The children are so happy to see daddy bringing home that quarter kilo of meat. Then mama's full bag. Did you know that? Or even two pieces of skumawik. Bring them home. But people, will, everybody in the house will know that these ones belong to who? To daddy. But now when you stay home and you are the master of the remote, the king of remote, station one, station B. Kama wako hapa mwache yotadia. Nicholas Ronisikia. We must be practical. I'm not saying Nicholas does that. At least he wakes up very early in the morning. A few times I've asked him to be in my house at 6 a.m. and he has been there. We thank God for it. So, mm -hmm. so the word of God is saying we must work. There's no shortcut. We were told to work to a Jashu. It's godly. There's nothing sinful about it. If you don't work, there's everything sinful about it. So when you are taken to work in the workplace, people want to see how you are working. That may just change them and want to be like you and will have brought a broadened the house of the Lord. The fourth thing, how do you talk? How do you talk? Do not let unwholesome talk come out, come off of your mouth. I used to be guilty of this quite a lot, and I'm still working on it. Unwholesome talk. Could you talk what is building up others? When somebody was talking to my workers about uh, um, retirement, he went through a mathematics. Uh, Gishuru knows those areas, and was looking on how someone gets a salary and how it's utilized everywhere. And they concluded that, we all, that they were earning negative 35,000 per month, which was somehow true. I'm not going into that, but if I have another day, I can teach us. And many of the people who work, especially who are getting salaries, you discover when you have retired, I'm not talking about my sister, I know Ali Jipanga, that actually do not have much to show for it. And the reason is because we were actually getting negative. We were reminded that this issue of employment actually came in the industrial age, when slavery was outlawed. Before it, there was slavery. People in Europe would go to Africa to get people who would work for them under slavery. Even those in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, they did that. But you don't find the black generation in Saudi Arabia. 
in Qatar, in Kuwait, but they were used to free labor. So people invented labor, whereby I employ you, but I continue giving you less money. And you think you are really working for money, when the truth is you are working for me freely. So he was calling it glorified slavery. And he was telling people to confess that they are glorified slaves. I told him, young man, I put mama kidogo wako. When you speak things, they become real. We are not glorified slaves. You have just educated us. We just work us. <laughs> so they know before you speak, you must know what you are saying. Confess the truth. Do the right things. What do you speak? It doesn't matter how things go wrong. You have heard of how people have gotten into accidents and how they react. And others are saying, Oh, mimi ni mekufa. Na kule, they say so in, in, in French. Na kule mono, some people know here who are French. Um, you are not supposed to say that. You are supposed to declare the word of God. I shall not die, but I live to declare the works of God. Because indeed you don't die. Even if God took away your life, you are still alive. What do you confess? What kind of talk comes of you? Do you encourage people? Do you discourage them? Do you curse people? You know those kind of languages. Eh? You are supposed to say, I have a blessed child. My child is prospered. You must turn the language around. So what do you speak in the marketplace? And I dare to you that when you speak this, when people notice what you speak, you declare it. And the next day they see it become true. They would want to be like you. So let's extend our tent by what we speak. What comes out of us by what we discuss. I'm going to mention three more and then I, I'll end there. I'll leave others for another time. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. I have looked for, I didn't look for this word grieving the Holy Spirit, but the Bible, the word of God reminded me of the story of Ananias and his wife. And in, in, in Acts, the book of Acts, I think if you read Acts 5.3, uh, that's the time when uh, uh, the, 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 the Jesus had just left and the church was formed and therefore people would meet, the church would meet and they started sharing the word of God. They even shared property but they would be open to one another and say this is how I got it and all that. But Ananias and Sapphira, you know what they did? They went and sold their beautiful land uh, Presbyter, I was blessed to go on Friday someplace where my sister Winnie lives, somewhere in, um, I don't know how they call it, but um, um, someplace in Kitale, um, there's this lady called Kitonyi, a Mandela women lady. I was in her farm. And these are places where people own farms. If you have less than 500 acres, you don't speak before elders. You know those places. They, they exist in Kenya here. They are there. I won't speak of old times. My sister Winnie Mbunjiro lives close to those places. You know what I mean, huh? Eh? What do you call that place? Sorry? Yes. And I discovered a beautiful road, Presbyter. When you are going to Kitale, don't use the normal road. Go through Eldred, through Eldred University. It's a beautiful road there, into Kitale. No roads, no trailers. Beautiful. Because you are passing through these farms where people own 5,000 acres, 2,000 minimum, four. So all you meet are tractors, cows, 
eating and they're enjoying you. Am I still in Kenya? Yes, you are there. It exists in this land. What I'm driving at is you may find one person, maybe a Meguzwa, and you decide to sell that piece of land. But instead of being open, you cheat the brethren that we only sold this, and therefore we are exposing the church. Whom are you lying to? Lying to the Holy Spirit and lying to God. Even if you, <laughs> you lie, please, never ever lie to God. Whatever you do, there are always three witnesses, you know it. You, the Holy Spirit, and who? Huh? Kuna uyo mtu mwingine. Anaona. Sometimes he asks God, this guy is lying to you. God, you very well know that I, can, I cannot even lie like he has done. <laughs> so, we should not lie to the Holy Spirit. That grieves the Holy Spirit. In our walk outside there, let us leave this issue of lies. It's so easy to do. You are somewhere, others ask you, where are you? You are in Kirelesho and you are busy saying you are where? In Thika. And you are born again. And Ascari arrests you. You are driving at 90. And you are saying, I just did um, 82. Are you going to sana Ascari? Whom are you lying to? To our channel and lies. Yes, God wants us to say the truth. There are other things that we need to deal with. The issue of bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, and malice. I've mentioned about anger and bitterness and rage. Um, those two, we just have to deal with them. You know, um, I know Apostle Das taught me through another book he wrote, The Growth of Bitterness, Anger to Re Resentment. How many read it? Yes. When you become angry and you do not deal with it, it uh, matures to bitterness. And when you don't deal with the bitterness, it goes into things like rage. It can go into brawling. When you want to solve your issues, ningumeru, you don't have any language of love in you. God does not love it. And if you don't deal with it, it goes into resentment. God wants us to be a people who can deal with those things. The others, slander, slandering your friends, slandering others, uh, a very easy sin to go into. It's talking negative, talking lies about others. God is reminding us to deal with it. Can you learn to speak the truth? Speak love. Do not be malicious to others. Be kind, be compassionate to one another. Forgiving one another. Just like in Christ, God forgave you. So today, my brothers and sisters, I just thought I remind us, because we know these things, isn't it? There are many more reminders I would have gone to, but because of time, I want us to stop there until another day or another chance or in another venue that God gives me. We can remind ourselves there are many things that we need to do at the workplace. One way in which we extend our tend is through that character, that person, are you a person someone would want to be? Because if you are, definitely, you would have extended the work of God. You would have extended your turn. You will attract someone to the kingdom of God. Let's do it not just by visiting them in different ways, but by our life in itself. What we eat, what we speak, how we do it, where we interact through our desires, how we share how we love, God would wish us to emulate that at the workplace. 
in the field, in the marketplace, as it has been called. So today, I want to pray for us. I just want us to rise and ask God to touch us in our workplace. Uh, if you have good legs like mine, just stand up and ask <laughs> so that we can come back to the Lord. Father, we want to thank you today. We thank you, Lord God, for having been kind to us, O Papa. You forgave us even when we did not deserve. Why? It because of our own desires or what, Lord, or our way of life, we would not qualify to be born. But because of your grace, you chose us, O oh God, from that far part of the world and brought us to you. Lord, we thank you for that special gift. And now we pray because of your assurance, O oh God, that you are always with us. It may not matter how hard things may be out there. God, you are with us. And we thank you. We bless, we worship you. Father, we pray you may touch us as we extend our tenders. We have commanded as in Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 4. Father, may you today touch us. May we change our character, especially in the marketplace. We are a new creation. May that be seen with those around us. May it be an attraction, oh God, to you. May we disciple through that, oh Father. Father, watch over us, oh Father. May we change in our character. Lord, may we, oh God, put off all. May you touch us at our mind. May you touch us in our belief set up. That, oh God, it may be towards graciousness, towards holiness, towards living right with you, God. Lord, may that be our desire. May that happen in us, oh God, we pray. Father, may we watch what we speak. May it not be guile, oh Father. We pray today, touch us, oh God. Oh, how we bless you, Papa. Father, no unwholesome talk should come out of our mouths. May we just glorify you. May we worship you. Oh, God, may we speak what is helpful in your Father. Father, may we also learn to control our emotions. We pray particularly the issue of anger. Lord, may we manage anger. May we manage anger. May it not result into bitterness. May we instead love one another. May we love our neighbor, oh God, we pray. May we be quick to forgive and receive love from you, Lord God. Lord, touch us. Touch us, Papa, we pray today. Lord, you have touched us, particularly the men. May we embrace work. May we love work. You commanded us to work. You allowed us in this world to work, to, do, to dominate this world through work. You told us to name the animals, to name the plants. Though that was work, we were supposed to tend the, the garden of, of Eden. Father, may we not forgive that. May we not leave that, oh Father. Forgive us for not working. Forgive us for not working. Touch our hearts, Papa, we pray. May you give us the desire to work and work hard. May we not still work. May we do businesses. May we do our work in our employment. May we farm at our workplace. May we work. Lord, we love you. We worship you. We magnify your name, our oh Father. Father, may we be compassionate to one another. May we be slow to anger, just like you are, oh Papa. May we forgive each other, just as Christ. In Christ, you forgave us. Lord, even in your prayer, what people call the Lord's Prayer, you have told us, oh Father, to forgive one another just like you've forgiven us. We love you. We bless you. Father, we thank you. Touch us that we have a new character, a different character in the marketplace. We love you and we bless you. Father, I pray that you may touch your children today, even as they leave church today, and go home and go to the marketplace that they shall portray Jesus Christ. They will portray Jesus Christ. May you meet them at the very point of need. There are those who are looking for jobs. May you open job opportunities. There are those who are looking for healing. Maybe they are unwell. Father, remember them. I'm praying even for the elders who are at home, oh Father. May you command them to rise, oh God, from that bed and walk to church because your word says that by your stripes we were healed, that you took away our infirmities and healed our diseases. That's your promise, oh God. We stand on that. 
and we declare and decree, we shall not die, but we shall live to declare the works of God, we pray. May you remember them. May you provide school fees for that one who is a desiring one. May you provide fees. May you provide for their needs. We thank you for the clothing. We thank you for the food you give us. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. Remember us, O oh God, Father, we pray. And more important, O oh God, we are praying that you may serve those who have not known you. Father, we pray that salvation comes from you, God. Remember our children. Remember our brothers. Remember our sisters. Remember our parents who do not know you. May they come to you, God, we pray today. It's our desire. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Jesus said.